So parang irerelate din po natin yon today. And sige po, let's start. <laughs> Or bukas na. Eh joke lang. Ayan. So, integrity of the heart and skillful hand. So, yan po yung dalawang bagay na ating pag-uusapan this evening. So, mahaba po or maikli, depende, pero ayan, para po magka-idea po tayo. And ang ating pong book na babasahin or ang text po natin is sa Psalms 78. Amen? So, ready na po ba? Amen. So, Ayan, simulan po natin, yung Psalm 78 po, babasahin po natin lahat yan. Pero kasi 72 verses siya. So baka pag binasa natin at inisa-isa natin ngayon, kahit na sobrang haba niya, baka bukas pa po tayo matapos. So, i-chop-chop po natin. Amen po. So simulan po natin sa Psalms 78 verse 5 to 8. <clears throat> Nababasa po ba? Amen. Ako kasi hindi ko yun mabasa. So dito ako magbabasa. <laughs> He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children. So pasa-pasa daw po. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to Him. Ouch. So sa Psalm 78 po, pag binasa po natin yung buong chapter na yan, makikita po natin yung parang summarization ng ginawa ng Panginoon sa mga Israelites nung panahon po na nilid po ng Lord ang Israelites out of Egypt, sa wilderness, para pumapunta po sila sa promised land. So, pag binasa po natin yan, may kita natin yung uh, character ni God and character ng mga uh, Israelita nung panahon na yon. So, I encourage you to study it, read it on your own, in your house, and meditate on it as well. So, <clears throat> Psalm 78 po is a reminder of what God has done for His people and yung instruction po niya sa mga tao. So, bakit? Bakit may instruction? Kasi, sabi po sa verse 8, so that they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts are not loyal to God and whose spirits were not faithful to Him. So, para daw po hindi maging kagaya ng mga ancestors, yung ugali ng mga susunod na henerasyon na maglilingkod sa Panginoon. So, yun po yung gusto ng Lord eh. Kasi yung ancestors na to, sobrang, sobrang challenging po talaga nilang mga nilalang. No? So, ano-ano ba yung mga ginawa ng mga ancestors na to? So, again, eto po yung mga panahon na God led His people out of Egypt into the wilderness para po papunta sa promised land. Okay po? Para maintindihan natin yung backstory and yung context po ng ating pinag-aaralan. So, tignan po natin yung attitude ng mga hearts ng mga ancestors na to. Para daw hindi natin sila gayahin. Next po. Ayan. So, una, they were stubborn, rebellious, rebellious hearts, hearts are not loyal to God, and the, their spirits are not faithful to Him. So, yan po yung una sa verse 8. Mamaya po, makikita natin kung bakit stubborn, but rebellious, bakit hindi loyal, bakit unfaithful sila sa kanilang Creator, sa, sa kanilang Lord. So, <clears throat> next, they did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His law. So, yun, kasi stubborn nga sila, di ba? Hindi sila loyal and faithful to God. So, ayaw nila, they refuse. Ibig sabihin, choice nila na ayaw nila na mamuhay ayon sa dinikta ng Panginoon for them. Also, they put God to the test by demanding the food that they craved. Dito po talaga, nagrabihan ako eh, grabe talaga yung demand ng mga Israelita na to. Parang, ang gara. Uh, grabe, grabe po talaga, mamaya may kita natin. And last, they continually mock God. So dito po natin makikita yan sa next verse. 
Next slide. Ayan, so, Psalms 19, sabi dyan, They spoke against God, they said, Can God really spread the table in the wilderness? True, He struck the rock, and water gushed out, streams flowed abundantly, but can He also give us bread? Can He supply meat for His people? So dito po natin may kita talaga yung pagiging demanding ng mga Israelita. Parang hinahamon nila si Lord eh. They test God and they mock God. Sabi nila, bakit? Kaya ba talaga ng Lord na maghanda sa wilderness? Nandito tayo sa kawalan. And oo nga, sige, nag-provide ang Lord ng tubig sa bato. Abundant rivers of waters. Pero kaya din ba tayong bigyan ng Lord ng tinapay? Even better, kaya kaya tayong bigyan ng Lord ng karne? Yon. So they really are demanding. They're mocking God. <clears throat> Hindi pa sapat yung mga binigay at pinoprovide ng Lord sa kanila kasi they continually want more. Amen. So yan yung attitude ng kanilang mga hearts. Next slide. Ayan. Sabi dito, They ate till they were gorged. He had given them what they craved. Yung meat. Amaya, pag-usapan po natin yan. But before they turned from what they craved, even while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. So, tinitest po nilang Panginoon eh. Amen. So, sige nga, kaya ba ng Lord magbigay ng karne, ng meat? And so, makikita po natin yung foreshadowing po niyang verses na yan sa Numbers 11. Dito po tinatawag po yun na quail and epidemic. Kung saan, yung mga, yung Lord, ipinrovide talaga yung meat sa kanila, literally, kasi parang tinangay ng hangin ni Lord yung mga quail, yung sa pugo, dun sa lugar kung nasaan sila. So literally, sa labas ng tents nila, nag-ulanan yung mga quail dun, napadpad sila dun, kasi pinadpad sila ng Lord doon. And parang, sige, tignan nga natin. Diba? So, pinrovide ng Lord kung ano yung kinecrave nila. Pero ba diba, sabi dyan, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. So, parang, tines ng Lord. Eh. Sige, <clears throat> binigay ng Lord. And, talagang may kita natin yung pagiging ano nila, super one thing nila dun sa kinecrave nila. Kaya talagang kinain nila. Kinonsume nila yung mga yon And in the end, God's anger rose. So parang napikon na talaga si Lord. Grabe talaga tong mga anak ko na to. Hindi talaga napapaawat. So, God, nag, nag, siguro bird flu yon Hinayaan ng Panginoon na magkaroon sila ng kasakitan dahil doon. So, God disciplined them because of that. So, sobra-sobra talaga yung hearts nila na nagkikrave sa mga bagay-bagay and nakakalimutan nila kung sino ba yung Diyos nila. So, yun po yung attitude ng hearts nila. And even worse, may, may mas worse pa, no? Despite all that, they made idols. So, may kita yan sa verse 57 to 58 po ng Psalms 78. And makikita natin siya sa Exodus 32 verse 1. Sabi dyan, after the people saw that Moses had been on the mountain for a long time, they went, they went to Aaron and said, Make us an image of God who will lead us and protect us. Moses brought us out of Egypt, but nobody knows what has happened to him. Sabi nila kay, ano, sabi nila kay, uh, uh, kay Aaron. So, si Aaron, ay si Aaron, si Moses nasa mountain eh. Nainip sila sa baba, sabi nila, Aaron, gawin mo nga kami ng Diyos na maglilid sa amin tsaka magpoprotect sa amin. Kasi, oo, si, si Moses nilid kami pa alis sa Egypt. Pero di natin alam kung nasa na siya tsaka ano na nangyari sa kanya. Iniwan niya tayo. Eh. Parang ganun yung naging hearts nila eh. Parang, eh, we do, nobody knows what has happened to him, ba? So, gawan mo kami ng Diyos. Gawan mo kami ng, ng maglilid and protect sa amin. So, grabe na lang talaga yung demand nila. And yes, they made idols. As if God wasn't enough. As if His guidance, His miracles, everything na pinuprove ng Lord to them in the wilderness, 
it was nothing. And tatandaan natin, where God leads, He provides. And God is faithful to His people back then. Talagang stubborn and rebellious, hindi uh, unloyal talaga sila, and unfaithful sila sa Lord. Kaya, sobra-sobra na lang talagang uh, yung puso ng Panginoon for them. Kung baga ba, umiiyak na, naboburden talaga, naboburden din po talaga si Lord. Pero ito yung inisip ng Panginoon. Ayan. Sabi, pero si Lord, sa verse 38 dyan, He was merciful and He forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them. Time after time, He restrained His anger and did not stir up His full wrath. Kung baga, pigil na pigil pa si Lord. Sa lagay na yon, Pigil na pigil po talaga. He remembered that they were but flesh. Passing. A passing breeze that does not return. So parang kinukomfort ng Lord sarili niya every time eh. Ano ba naman tong mga anak ko na to? Palibhasa kasi eh, di ba? They're just humans. Flesh. Di ba? Nan today, nandyan, bukas pwedeng wala na. So, grabe. Nagtitimpi pa pala si Lord sa lagay na yon. So, ang hirap pala talaga, kung yung, kung yung pagtitimpi ng Panginoon is uh, yung quail ep epidemic, yung napoison silang lahat, yung natatalo sila ng mga armies na nakakasalubong nila, kung yun yung pagtitimpi ng Panginoon, ano pa kaya yung full God's wrath? No? Pero God is merciful to His people and His children po talaga. And we all know that. And maybe we are being reminded about that right now. And so, may time din talaga na si Lord is naging silent. ba? Diba? He left His people. He went silent for a while. Ayan. Sabi po dito, But He brought His people out like a flock, and He led them like sheep through the wilderness. Ito ulit yung attitude ng Lord, yung heart ng Lord pa din. Talagang super love. <laughs> He guided them safely, so they were unafraid. And so He brought them to the border of His holy land, to the hill country His right hand had taken. He drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel, their home. So, yan po yung attitude ng Lord. Continuation kanina. Talagang patuloy at patuloy yung faithfulness ng Lord to His unfaithful people. So, pero ganun pa rin nila i-ano si Lord, i-test, i-mock. Hindi, talaga ito nagana. Ayan, next slide. Ayan. So, ayan. Next, <laughs> medyo nagde-delay po siya, pasensya na po. But they put God to the test. So kanina, di ba, nakikita natin yung unfailing love ng Lord. Pero ito na naman po yung mga Israelites. They put God to the test. Kasi parang kung babasahin po talaga natin, parang siyang tug of war. Alam niyo po yung tug of war? Di ba, may, may tension, may pressure. Tapos, back and forth, back and forth silang ganyan ng Lord, yung people niya. Pero ang Panginoon, patuloy po sa kanilang nagbibigay ng pasensya. And yet, ito po sila continually... They put God to the test. They rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep His statutes. Like their ancestors, they were disloyal and faithless. Unreliable as a faulty bow, they angered Him with their high places. They aroused Him, His jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, He was furious and He rejected Israel completely. Amen. So napuno na siguro si Lord eh. Wala wala nang nagagawa yung galit din siguro ng Lord sa kanila kasi si Lord i-discipline sila and then they would come back, come back to God. And after a while, naging komportable na naman sila. They would rebel against God again. Amen. Paulit-ulit lang yung ganun eh. And then finally he rejected Israel completely. Pero alam naman natin na ang Panginoon, he cannot completely abandon his children. Amen po ba? Amen. So, he completely he rejected Israel completely. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh and the tent he had set up 
among humans. So, napahaba pa po kasing storya pag in-explain ko kung ano yung, yung tabernacle of Shiloh. Pero maybe someday, ipag-uusapan natin. But then, dito sa part na to, God abandoned them because the Ark of the Covenant was destroyed, was stolen, and talagang nag yung people. Because God, for them, God abandoned them. Kasi nga, sobrang, sobrang nasobrahan na si Lord. Kumbaga, hindi na kinaya. So, Nagpahinga muna, Panginoon. Nagpahinga. Basta yun. He rejected Israel completely. Pero, sabi po sa verse 65, Then the Lord awoke us from sleep as a warrior wakes from a stupor of wine. Di ba nga sabi kanina, hindi nakakapagtimpi ang Panginoon. Amen na. Hindi niya kayang hindi tayo, ano eh, gabayan talaga. Hindi niya kayang hindi mahalin, hab, mahabag. sa sitwasyon ng mga uh, anak niya. Dahil nga sabi kanina, he remembered that we are but a passing breeze. Amen? So, the Lord awoke after rejecting them completely as from sleep and he saw David. Ayan, mag skip po tayo. And he saw David. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to the shepherd of his people. To be shepherd, to, the, to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. David shepherded them with integrity of the heart and skillful hands. So, kanina pinag-usapan natin yung attitude or hearts ng mga ancestors para magkaroon tayo ng idea kung gaano na ba talaga sila kakulit or ano na ba talaga yung ayaw ng Lord na tayo ay maging. And ngayon, we're going to talk about David. Kasi nga nagtimpi si Lord, di ba? And finally, he saw David. So, sino ba si David? Ayan. So, we're going to focus po on the verse 72. But before that, sino ba si David? Ayan. So, si David, di ba, uh, pinapunta po ng Lord si Samuel. Makikita po natin ang story ni David sa first Samuel. First Samuel 16. So, pinapunta ng Lord si Samuel sa bahay ni Jesse kung saan makikita niya daw si David. And nakita ng Lord, nakita ni Samuel yung kapatid ni David na si Eliab. Sabi niya, ito, mukhang fit to be king. Kasi sabi ng Lord, no, for I have rejected him. Hindi si Eliab yung hinahanap ko because the Lord looks at the heart and the people. Pero yung mga tao, they look at the appearance. Amen po ba? So dito makakita po natin yan sa Samuel 16 verse 7. So hindi ko po nilagay para po inote po natin at i-meditate. Okay? Then finally, nakita ni Lord si David na may pusong dalisay and he was the one. So sa 1 Samuel 16, 12 to 13, makikita natin na inanoint ni Samuel si David and the Spirit of the Lord rested on him. So, from tending the sheep, kinuha at inappoint ng Lord si David to be the king or soon to be king of Israel, of his people. So, ano naman, di ba? <laughs> Tapos na po. Char. Haba ng introduction. Pero, dami na nating napag-usapan. Pero para lang po yung maintindihan natin yung konteksto ng panahon noon at panahon ngayon. Which, to be honest, hindi naman po nagkakaiba. Because marami pong stubborn Christians. Ako, pwede tayo, stubborn, ikaw. We have stubborn tendencies towards the Lord. Amen po ba? Pero ganun na lang po ba tayo mananatili? Like the ancestors? Eh sabi nga ng Panginoon, teach them God's word so that they would trust Him. So that they would not be like their ancestors. So, gusto ng Panginoon to see in us A heart like what he saw in David's heart. Ano ba yung sabi sa verse 72? David shepherded them with integrity of the heart. With skillful hands, he led them. Amen. So, dun po tayo magfo-focus. Will God find in you, among the people, the stubborn people, a heart like David? Or a heart like that to serve him, to serve God? So, Ayan. mag start na po tayo sa mismong topic natin. Okay po ba? Nandyan pa po ba kayo? Ang dami na po nating napag-usapan, parang history. No? Pero importante po kasi yung history para ma- 
matama natin yung present and future. Char! <laughs> Joke lang, the future is here. Joke. Ayan. So, integrity of the heart. What does integrity mean? Ang lalim. Bakit ka kasi nag-English ka? Ta Puro ka English. Char! Ayan. So, integrity. Sabi dito, principle dedication to values and belief seek to reflect ethical standards and do the right thing regardless of the circumstances. Ang lalim. <laughs> Yan, sige, tatagalugin natin. So, ang isang taong may integridad daw po is may prinsipyo at may dedikasyon. <laughs> word for word pala itatagalog. May prinsipyo, dedicated siya sa mga values, sa mga paniniwala, seek to reflect ethical standards. So, ethical standards yung may moral no yung tama to seeking seeking to do the right thing yung tamang dapat gawin regardless of the circumstance umaraw gab umaraw man o gumabi man ko ano ang tama yun ang paninind may paninindigan amen at siya ay mapagkakatiwalaan sa pinakamaikling summary ang isang taong may integridad, siya ay mapagkakatiwalaan. Amen? So, i-take note po natin yan. Principle dedication to values and beliefs. May dedikasyon, may prinsipyo sa tamang bagay. Okay po? Siya ay mapagkakatiwalaan. Siya ay may dedikasyon. So, let's break it down. What does a person of integrity looks like? No? Isa lang ba siyang ilusyon? <laughs> Totoo ba ng taong may integridad? Okay. So, ayan. What does a person of integrity looks like? Has inner commitment. Ano naman ibig sabihin ng inner commitment? Trustworthy and commun communicating the truth without deception. Lives without duplicity and hypocrisy. So, perfect daw. <laughs> De, joke lang. <laughs> so, ang isang taong may integridad daw or integrity, has inner commitment. Mapagkakatiwalaan siya. Kung ano ang tama, yun ang kanyang sasabihin. Ano ang totoo, yun ang kanyang sasabihin. Walang pagtatago. Kung sino siya, siya yun. What you see is what you get. Without duplicity daw eh. Without hypocrisy. Without deception. So, tignan naman natin kung ano ang sinasabi ng Bible tungkol sa integrity. Sabi po sa Luke 16.10, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So, parang self-explanatory na, no? Sino, at saka, familiar po tayo kung sino mapagkakatiwalaan sa maliit na bagay, mapagkakatiwalaan din siya sa malaking bagay. And ikaw, kung dishonest ka sa mga maliliit na bagay, malamang kay, may tendency ka ding maging dishonest sa major big things. Major na nga, big pa. Sa mga malalaking bagay. So, the Bible speaks about that. Pero dito po tayo mag-focus. Focus din kayo doon. Pero ito, i-expound natin. Proverbs 11, verse 1 to 3. The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor in Him. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. So, duplicity, ibig sabihin yung two-faced ka. Yung iba ka dito, iba ka doon. Tapos, dishonest ka, syempre, alam naman natin ibig sabihin ng dishonest. Pero, sabi dyan, the, the, the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. So, ouch, di ba? Kasi babalik din talaga sa atin yung mga bagay na tinatago natin. We cannot truly hide before the Lord. And if God is calling you, you want to serve the Lord, you have to come clean before the Lord. Kasi nga, the Lord detests dishonest scales. Amen? Ayaw ng Lord nang nagtatago. Kasi hindi ka naman magkakapagtago talaga sa Lord at wala kang maitatago sa Panginoon. And there are no secrets that we can keep. Either God will call us out, through our brothers and sisters, or God will call you out Himself. Ya unleash na yung full rat niya sa in, sa yung. Kung hindi po tayo talaga magiging honest, kar, uh, tapat sa service natin sa Panginoon, to His people. Kasi God hates it. Ayun ng Panginoon ng sinungaling. Amen? 
Sa Tagalog, yun po yun. Ayaw ng Lord na sinungaling. God values people of in- with integrity. God values honesty. Amen? With pride comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Mamaya pag-uusapan po natin yan. Pero, hindi naman ibig sabihin that a person of integrity is perfect. But, a person of integrity is not perfect but is quick to acknowledge their own mistakes and faults. Kasi nga, hindi naman po tayo makakapagtago sa Panginoon. Eh. Diba nga, with humility comes wisdom, sabi. So, sabi dyan, Ayan. Their sincerity comes from a pure met- motivation to do the right thing even when it might be inconvenient. Ayan nga, sabi sa Proverbs 11 verse 2, when pride comes, then comes so, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes Wisdom. So ulitin lang po natin yan. So si David sa Psalms 51, kung makita po natin dito yung confession niya before the Lord. Pero sa Psalms, ay sa verse 10, sabi niya dito, Lord, create in me a pure and clean heart para makapagserve ako sa iyo ng totoo ulit. And we all know the verse, 1 John 1.9. Amen? Sa pag-amin may paglaya. Amen? <clears throat> Ayan. So, ano pa? Sabi dyan, from a pure motivation to do the right thing, even when it might be inconvenient. Ano pa ba yung inconvenient bukod sa maging honest tayo before the Lord sa mga kasalanan natin? Inconvenient din po yung pag-call out sa brothers and sisters natin or pag-rebuke. Amen po ba? Kasi masakit siya sa ego, masakit sa basag trip, masakit sa basag trip. ba? Diba? Kasi... Inconvenient yun eh. Sobrang inconvenient na may taong lalapit sa'yo or ikaw lalapit ka sa tao para kausapin sila. But that is also one thing that God calls integrity. That we're able to come clean. We do the right thing even when it's inconvenient. We help and encourage our brothers and sisters. Kasi nga, last week pinag-aralan natin, di ba? We are accountable to each other. So kasama din po yun doon. Amen? So, Ayan. Sabi dyan, ayan, kasi nga we are accountable to our friends, our family, the people that God calls us to share the gospel with, and especially yung brothers and sisters natin before the Lord. So, tandaan po natin, a person of integrity is not perfect but is quick to acknowledge their faults with humility. Kasi nga, mas masakit, truth hurts. Amen po ba? Pero, yung consequences ng lying hurts either way. Pero mas masakit yung consequence. Amen po ba? So, anong pipiliin natin? Yung sakit ng pagiging totoo o yung sakit ng nagsinungaling tayo tapos babalik sa atin yung ten times? Amen? So, God desires in us to be true to Him. to ser- In serving Him. True to His people. Kasi nga, the Lord detests dishonesty. God Honesty is the best policy. Eka nga. So, totoo yon sa GMRC. So, balikan natin din yun. No? Honesty is the best policy. So, kasi nga, yun din ang sinasabi ng Bible. Yun ang gusto ng Panginoon, that we are honest. Kasi mas masakit kapag ka binalikan tayo ng mga wrongdoings natin, na tinago natin, na mas, tas biglang nabunyag. Then, mas masakit... Kahit na masakit yung katotohanan, mas masakit kapag bumalik sa atin yung mga consequences ng ating mga ginawa. Amen po ba? Amen. Totoo yan. We can all testify to that. So, lahat po yan is a heart check inside. No? check ng Lord yung heart natin. Are we a person of integrity? Will God see integrity in us? So, tandaan po natin that what goes on inside of you will determine where you are headed. Kung ano ang nangyayari sa loob ng puso mo will determine where you are headed. Kasi nga, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Kung anong nasa heart mo, eventually, yun yung magre-reflect sa bawat isa. Amen po ba? Amen. Ayan. A person of integrity is not only honest, but is also humble. 
So, napag-usapan na po natin yan kanina. Parang sinummarize lang. Diba? Kasi with humility comes wisdom. Ibig sabihin, we'll learn from it. Amen? Next. Balik tayo sa verse 72. And David shepherded them with integrity of the heart, with skillful hands, he led them. Alam niyo po, nung nakamacross po ako sa verse na to, sabi ko, grabe sana, all may integrity of the heart and skillful hands. Kaya talagang nilid ako ng Lord na, ano ba ibig sabihin ng pagkakaroon ng integrity of the heart at skillful hands? And praise God that we're able to talk about it this evening. So, next, ang aarali na po natin is skillful hands. What does skillful hands mean? Eh, wala akong skill eh. Wala akong talent. ba? Diba? No. So, napag-usapan din po natin yan nung mga nakakaraang ating mga pag-uusap uh, dito sa pulpit. Ayan. Sabi, do you see, sakit sa mata, do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before, before kings. They will not serve before officials of low rank. So, wala naman pong king sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Pero bilang mga anak ng Lord, we are called to serve the king of kings. Amen po ba? Amen. So, do you see someone skilled in their work? They will serve before Ayan. So, yun po yung sinasabi sa <clears throat> Proverbs. So, literally, we are being called to serve God, the King of Kings. Amen po ba? Amen. Or din deny? Joke. Ayan. Sabi dyan, what does a skillful person looks like? Anong itsura ng skillful person? Number one, someone who seeks the gifts God gave. Amen. Kasi minsan na discourage po tayo na wala naman akong talent. Ano gagamitin ko? Hindi naman ako marunong mag-instrumento, kumanta or magpipindot diyan sa computer. Anong gagawin ng Lord sa akin? So hindi lang naman po ito yung gifts na binigay ng Lord. Kasi mas marami pang hinanda ang Panginoon na gagawin natin before him. And here in this world, sabi po dito, there are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service. Iba-iba daw po. But the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. So wala po tayong excuse. Hindi sa wala kang talent. Hindi sa wala kang kayang gawin dito sa, sa taas na to or dun sa taas dun. It's not about that. Kasi lahat po tayo bilang mga anak ng Panginoon, binigyan na tayo ng Lord ng gift. ba? Diba? And there are many kinds of gifts. If you're called to encourage, encourage. If you're called to go sa, na mag-evangelize, that's also a gift. Kasi may iba talaga, sobrang galing eh. ba? Diba? May iba naman na taga-consolidate. Kasi nga, there are different parts of the body. But there is only one head and that is Jesus Christ. ba diba nga, pinag natin dito, hindi naman pwede lahat mata. Hindi naman pwede lahat kamay. ba? Diba? Because everyone has different gifts. So, seek that out to the Lord. Lord, ano yung gusto mong gawin ko? ba diba nga, a person of integrity is not only <clears throat> honest, but is also humble. So, it's one sign of humility when we come to God and ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen? Amen po ba? Amen. Ayan. Next verse, sabi po dito. Ayan. Next. So, yun. We seek our gifts before the Lord. Amen. Kasi meron yan eh. Bawat isa, meron kahit isa. Sobrang-sobrang blessing lang talaga yung merong mga hinakot. Pero lahat tayo meron kahit isa. Amen po ba? And use that. Use that for the Lord because God gave that to you. Because after all, there are different kinds of service. May iba-ibang service. May iba-ibang klase ng working before the kingdom of the Lord. Before God. And where God has called you dito sa church. Amen? Next. Someone who uses and enhances those gifts. So syempre, hindi naman po natin nahayang nakadisplay lang yung mga gift natin, di ba? Or yung mga abilities na binigay ng Panginoon, either to speak, either to, to go, either to encourage people. Hindi natin dapat wini-waste yung mga binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. So let's use it and let's enhance 
those gifts. So again, before, kung nakikinig po tayo, kung di po kayo naka-attend, di ba, may online naman, we talked about empowerment of the Lord, yung, um, yung uh, mga binigay ng Panginoon sa atin, yung evangelizing, amen. Pinag-usapan po natin yan in the past weeks, yung equipping, di ba? So, sabi dito, each of you should use whatever gifts you have, received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So yan, clear, sinabi ng Lord, you should use whatever gift that you have. Diba? You seek what that is and you use it for the Lord. Amen? Sabi rin po sa next verse dyan, do, do not merely listen to the word, but, and, <laughs> and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away immediately, forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Kasi nga, di ba kanina, we, we ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. Kasi nga, hindi naman po natin dapat hayaan yung mga binigay ng Lord sa atin. To be honest, napaka-blessed po natin kasi bilang mga member ng church na ito, God gave us yung mga materials that we can use so that we can enhance our gifts or we can discover our gifts. Amen. Example na po dyan is sa life group natin, meron tayong pinag-aaralan yung tuklasin. Amen. May mga same materials tayo. So that mga basic things na dapat natin matandaan, matutunan, para ma-equip po tayo. And every day, we are encouraged to also read, read, and read God's Word. And also to do and do and do what God's Word says. Kasi nga sabi dyan, do not merely listen to the Word, but do what it says. So, Madami na pong pinrovide ng Panginoon for us para ma-enhance yung skills natin, magamit yung skills natin. Also, God provided His Word. Sabi sa 2 Timothy 3:16 to 17 God's Word is God, God's breath. Ay, ano, useful for teaching, rebuking. Amen po ba? And so many more. So, hindi ko nilagay para isulat nyo. <laughs> And may ma devotion kayo. Ayan. God provided His power. Acts 1:8. Kagaya ng power na nag kay David when he was anointed by Samuel. That's the same power. The same power that rose Christ from the dead is the same power that is in us. Para magamit tayo ng Lord. And also, God provided His encouragement. Napakadaming encouragement ng Panginoon sa Bible. Sabi sa Joshua 1.9, Do not be afraid. Amen. For I am with you. Sabi sa Matthew 28.20, As we go and make disciples, sabi ng Lord, I am with you to the very end of the age. And maraming marami pa pong sinasabi ang Lord sa Bible na encouragement na panghahawakan natin para ma-encourage tayo, ma magkaroon tayo ng lakas ng loob na magpagamit sa Kanya. Pinrovide na po talaga ng Panginoon at nakadepende na lang po talaga tayo sa willingness natin. Sabi dyan, a person with skillful hands looks is someone who is willing. Amen? Kasi, kung titignan po natin yung panahon dun sa mga ancestors, pinoprovide talaga ng Lord lahat eh. Pero kung willing ba sila, patuloy nilang itetest at imamak ang Lord. ba diba? Hindi. Amen? So God wants us to be willing. So nasa sa atin na talaga, nasa choice na natin kung magpapagamit ba tayo sa Lord. Magpapa-equip ba tayo sa Lord? Magpapa-enhance ba tayo the Lord, with sa Lord through the materials that we have? Through, being, through doing what the Word of God says. So, sabi dito sa verse, Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. 
watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, amen, a person of integrity, but eager to serve, not lording it over those who entrusted you. Hindi magiging mataas dun sa mga taong inaano mo, inu-oversee mo, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Lahat, niniintay natin. We will receive it. It will never fade away. But are we willing? Amen? Are we willing to be used by God? Are we willing to use our skills and gifts for the Lord? Kasi gusto ng Lord talaga, wholehearted, ayaw ng Lord ng pilit. Sabi dito, And you, my son Solomon, Acknowledge the Lord of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. So ayon ng Panginoon ng half-hearted. Gusto ng Lord wholehearted. Kasi yung mga... Yung mga ancestors noon, talagang du- dupli- ano? double-minded sila. Yung heart nila, divided into two. Pag nag-bless ang Lord, nasa Lord sila. Pag seemingly, para sa kanila, wala ang provision ng Panginoon, o maano sila, lumalayo din sila sa Panginoon. So, their hearts are divided. Ayaw ng Lord ng divided heart. Ayaw ng Lord ng, pag nag-devotion ka dun sa isang spot, Iwan mo si Lord doon sa spot na yun, tas bahala ka na sa buhay mo. Hindi pwede yon, <laughs> Hindi nangyayari yon, okay? Hindi mo naiiwan si Lord. Lord, dyan ka na, nag-devotion na ako. No, God does not want that. Gusto ng Lord, wholehearted and willing mind. Amen? Amen po ba? Amen. Ayan. So, it's really up to us to take on what it takes. Kasi kung yung, yung mga disipulo po, every day, nung panahon nila, yung 12 disciples, si Apostle Paul, di ba, ayaw sa kanila nung mga tao, lagi silang may opposition kapag they talk about Jesus. Every day, they, every day they face the threat, the threat of death. And lagi silang natutroon sa prison kasi ginagawa nila kung ano yung pinapagawa ng Lord sa kanila. Pero bakit kaya sila nagpapatuloy? Di ba? It's because they are willing. And it's because they focus on the crown of life. Amen. In the end, they focus on the things not of this earth, but the things above. Amen. So they were willing. They recognize God. They were faithful. They trust in God. Not like those ancestors who were rebellious, who were disloyal, who were faithless before the Lord. Amen. So this is also what God wants us to be as we serve Him in this earth. Amen. Hindi lang tayo basta-bastang nandito lang, atad lang ako ng church. Seek God's gift for you. Use it and enhance it. Amen. Then, iayos mo yung puso mo before the Lord para you have this integrity to lead God's people. You are honest in communicating the truth. You are committed to the Lord and, what, and His people. Amen po ba? Amen. So sabi dito, your passion, hunger, or even your gift will bring you before kings. So yung mga abilidad natin, talagang magagamit yan before kings. But your integrity is what keeps you there. Kung patuloy po tayong nagiging totoo sa Panginoon, or ginagawa mo na lang yan basta may magawa ka, kasi sabi daw, gawin, may gawin daw ako eh. But no, maging honest tayo in our hearts in what we are doing, we do it for the Lord, not just because we want to do it or sa sarili lang natin or para lang for show. So your integrity is what keeps you there. Kaya nga merong mga churches ngayon, di ba, may nag-step down kasi merong mga nakikitang flaws sa leadership and stuff like that. Kasi yung integrity, kulang eh. Or half-hearted. Amen. So, it's really important na skillful ka nga, pero yung integrity mo naman, wala. So, balance dapat po yan. 
Next, it takes integrity to maintain what God gives you, kagaya sabi kanina, but it takes persistence, determination, and consistency to make you focus. Amen? Or to grow. Okay? So, laging may, ano, no? Laging may kailangan talagang gawin kasi kailangan willing ka eh. Amen? Hindi lang dapat stay lang sa isa, eh, dapat daw honest. Okay, dapat daw gamitin. Okay. ba? Diba? But you have to have persistence, determination, passionate ka kasi you're serving before the King of Kings. Amen? Do you see anyone skillful in their work? They will serve before the Kings. And tayo, praise God because we have the blessing to serve the King of Kings. Amen po ba? Amen. So, Ayan. Wow, tapos na. <laughs> Ayan. So let's recap. Medyo malaman-laman na po yung mga napag-usapan natin. What does a person of integrity looks like? Has inner commitment. A person of integrity is not perfect. Siyempre, even God, sabi niya yung mga tao, talaga they're like but a breeze. Parang halaman lang yan. Nandito today, bukas wala na. Diba? But quick to acknowledge their own mistakes. They get back up again. Amen? Before the Lord. And what does a person, skillful person looks like? Someone who seeks the gifts God gave and someone who uses and enhances those gifts and someone who is willing. Amen? Kasi nga, huwag natin sayangin kung ano yung binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Let's seek ways to serve Him. Dapat para tayong video eh. We find ways. Amen po ba? Ayan. So, in conclusion, let's all have a heart full of integrity and willing hands to use and enhance our skills for God and for His people. Di ko po na, na add eh. But for God and for His people. Amen po ba? Amen. So, maraming maraming salamat po. Praise the Lord. Hello. Praise God. Salamat, Sister Kata.